you. Well, welcome to the Assembly Committee on Education. Will Secretary please call roll? Assemblywoman Duran. Here. Assemblyman Flores. Present. Assemblywoman Gorlo. Here. Assemblywoman Hansen. Here. Assemblywoman Hardy. Here. Assemblywoman Krasner. Here. Assemblywoman Marzola. Here. Assemblyman MacArthur. Here. Assemblywoman Miller. Here. Assemblywoman Nguyen. Here. Assemblywoman Tolls. Here. Assemblywoman Torres. Here. Chair Bill Bray Axelrod. Here. And it looks like we have all members present, so we do have a uh, quorum. Welcome to Assembly Committee on Education for those who are watching online or through our YouTube channel and those participating by phone or Zoom video. A uh, few housekeeping remarks that I want to make. I'm sure the members can say them by heart at this point, but we might have some new people who are joining us. So if you have not done so already, please make sure you mute your microphone when you're not speaking to minimize background noise. Committee members, please make sure to keep your camera on for the duration of the meeting so we can ensure a quorum. We do expect courtesy and respect in this committee. We don't always agree on policy, but we need to be respectful to each other in the legislative process. Um, all of our items can be, uh, materials can be viewed on Nellis. I don't believe we have anything on, on Nellis for this bill today, but typically we do. Um, and for those of you watching online in this virtual world, many members have multiple screens going on. So if you see a member looking, we don't take it as a sign of disrespect. They're likely just looking at uh, the bill or other uh, exhibits that we have. We have one bill hearing this afternoon, and I've a lot of, a lot of, a I just made up a word, allocated uh, equal time for testimony in support, opposition, and neutral. Each person providing testimony will be allowed a maximum of two minutes. Staff will time each speaker to ensure everyone is given an equal opportunity to speak. And speakers are urged to avoid repetition of comments made by previous speakers. We'll do overall the length for each testimony will be 30 minutes in each. Um, if you wish to testify and have not done so already, please register, register through the online link provided on the agenda for this meeting. Upon successful registration, you'll receive a telephone number, meeting ID and instructions for joining the meeting. So that we have an accurate record of the count, we ask that you do not share this information, but instead encourage others to register online as well. Uh, you may also submit public comments in writing, either in addition or in lieu of testifying. Um, the chair or members of the committee may request testifiers to submit documentation uh, supporting their testimony. I am now going to open the hearing on AB 167, the bill revises established provisions relating to education. Assembly Levitt, welcome to the Committee on Education, and please begin when you are ready. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, I just ran into a hiccup with this Zoom world. My camera is not turning on, and uh, it worked when I logged on here earlier this afternoon, but for some reason it's not working. Um, we are currently working on another computer, but uh, would you like me to proceed without my camera? Would you like to come into my office and I'll put my mask on and would you like to do that? That'd be awesome. Okay. I'll be so, uh, in we'll just one moment. Lady well, a uh, one minute recess. Thank you.
I walk the hills both ways. From materials, okay. you find the nature. All hand stitched, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. 100%. They are locally made, though. Uh, I found a little place in the city. So they are locally made. Very cute. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we will come back into the meeting. All right, thank you. And here, without further ado, Assemblyman Levitt, please begin. Well, I couldn't let the chair um, show me up, so I wore my mask as well. Um, I had to put it together before I came here, though, so it took me a second. Um, Thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Chair and, and, and members of the committee. For the record, I'm Glenn Levitt, uh, representing Assembly District 23 in Clark County. Um, thank you for your time today and your consideration of Assembly Bill 167. The bill amends existing law to provide additional information to students concerning mental health resources. As with current law, this information will be included on the back of school issued ID identification cards of pupils in public schools and of students attending public higher education institutions. A um, little background information, the topic of student mental health and suicide prevention has gained increasing attention during the COVID-19 pandemic. As many of you have read or heard about last year, the Centers for Disease Control released a report alerting the nation about a mental health crisis among students. Um, according to the CDC, between April and October 2020, Hospital emergency departments saw a rise in visits from kids for mental health needs. These visits, in, in, these visits increased sharply during the period of time remaining elevated through October of last year. Um, compared with 2019, the visits for children 12 to 17 years of age increased by 31%. In the report, the CDC states that expanding access to services that support children's mental health is critical during the COVID-19 pandemic. Here in Nevada, Superintendent Jara of the Clark County School District has also expressed his concerns about student mental health and especially about recent increases in the number of student suicides. Since this has been a problem even before the pandemic, it is clear that more needs to be done to address this issue. Assembly 167 builds upon previous legislation, adding to what to what is already provided to our student population. Under this bill, student ID cards will now include contact information concerning suicide prevention. My intent with this bill is to provide students with free and confidential support in times of suicidal crisis or emotional distress. I'll now go over the bill um, uh, prior to the, um, the friendly amendment. Uh, the major changes currently to the bill begin in section one, page two, line three. The new language of the bill requires that identification card cards for pupils in public schools will now include telephone numbers for a national and local suicide prevention hotlines and crisis centers. In addition, as written in this section also requires an explanation of various methods of accessing emotional services. Uh, section three of the bill is parallel is a parallel section beginning on page two, line 24. The section applies to the same requirements to identification cards of students attending our public colleges and universities. At this time, I will mention that I am agreeable to a friendly amendment that would accomplish four things. First, it clarifies that schools currently not that do not have ID cards are not required to print new cards to comply with this legislation. No institution will be required to reprint student IDs to comply with this bill. It will not, it will, it would only apply to new IDs or reprinted IDs. Second, the language, the new language for the, for the, for the ID cards will now be specific to crisis support suicide prevention hotline, listing the telephone numbers as 1-800-273-8255 and providing an option to text CARE to 839863. Um, per the suggestion of my one of my colleagues, um, we will be removing the word back that was currently in this second part um, as to provide for flexibility in printing. So 
Um, originally, the, the friendly amendment included the language for the back of IDs. We're removing that language um, just so that, uh, that, that there's more flexibility in when they're printing on these, on these IDs. Third, the Nevada system of higher education, and she may, may include safe voice information on the back of their ID cards and may include the crisis support center information. As we don't want to, we don't want to put any burden on, on or expense on any of the institutions that either do not have the ability to print um, additional information on their, on their ID cards, but we did want to open it up to NC institutions so that they may take advantage of this um, as, uh, as we, we believe it's important, it's important information that can be included on those IDs as well. Again, um, no, re, no uh, newly printed IDs will have to be printed for the, for the populace of the school. And, um, and it, would only, it would only be applied to reprints or, uh, or newly printed IDs. Fourth and finally, we received by the Crisis Support Services Hotline may be shared what we what we're trying to do here is important information from the crisis support services hotline may be shared with safe voice uh, about student if it complies with the current or future policy of the crisis support center we we realize that the crisis support center and uh and safe voice operate a little differently in how they how they uh how they handle the students but in the future if the if the policy fits in line with sharing information amongst the two uh, entities then we want them to have the ability to do so. It's not mandating that, mandating that they do so at this time or any time in the future. It's a, it's a permissive. So, Madam Chair, as uh, with your indulgence, I'd have I, I would like to have Lauren Por I have Lauren Porter here to provide some additional information on this bill. Go ahead. My name is Lauren Porter, for the record. Uh, Dear Chair Chairwoman Bilbray Axelrod and members of the Assembly Committee on Education, my name is Lauren Porter and I am a nursing student at Nevada State College. Additionally, I am honored to serve as the Sergeant at Arms for the Nevada State Student Alliance, which is our student government. Besides being a full-time student, I am honored to work with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. As someone who has endured a mental illness for most of my life, I am all too aware of the suffering, stigma, and sensation of isolation people like me have faced. Assembly Bill 167 will help raise awareness of mental health's importance on college and university campuses and throughout Nevada. I helped create a similar initiative on the Nevada State College campus and strongly believe in this bill's intent to expand efforts on all campuses. The student government joined forces with the Office of Student Life, Campus Recreation, and the Nevada State Care Team to create the Sting Out Stigma initiative. Sting Out Stigma was created out of passion and heart for helping students. Through this initiative, we determined it was critical to add the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline to the back of all faculty, student, and staff ID cards. The idea initially came from an AFSP public policy meeting where similar legislature from states like Kentucky, SB 42, adopted 327-2020, Washington, HB 2589, adopted 318 2020, and Wisconsin, AB 351, adopted 32 2020, were presented. We decided to take action. Within three days, the idea was approved, the template was made, and new cards were in production. I was ready to fight for this, and because of Nevada State's unwavering desire to put students' needs first, there was no fight, no kickback, and no questions. Our executive leadership saw the need and the benefit for students and made it happen. In Nevada and nationwide, suicide is the second leading cause of death in ages 10 to 34, the heart of the student demographic at Nevada State College, even with a non-traditional population. In 2020, Nevada was ranked among the highest suicide rates in the nation. Now into 2021, Las Vegas is catching national attention for the rising suicide rates within CCSD. As mentioned, Nevada State does have a non-traditional population. So whether our students are 18 and fresh out of CCSD or the mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, friends of those in CCSD, these numbers affect our community as a whole. There is a pandemic, there is a pandemic happening in this country, but a silent epidemic happening in our own homes. 
Assembly Bill 167 is needed now more than ever. Providing the lifeline number on the back <clears throat> on the back of cards is a massive achievement for sting out stigma and the Nevada state community. It is my belief that others should follow. This work must continue and the Nevada state campus will continue to promote our sting out stigma initiative on social media and connect its resources to the community. Together, we can create a world that is informed about mental health and suicide prevention. We can sting out stigma and save our students with Assembly Bill 167. Thank you. Thank you so much. And did you have any other comments or should we open it up for questions? Um, just that I have, I have Misty Allen of the Office of Suicide Prevention that's on um, and Brad Kinning from the Clark County School District also here to answer questions. Okay. And uh, committee, I know there was some confusion about the amendment. Um, I did not receive the amendment, but uh, Assemblyman Levitt ran over to his office, which luckily is just two doors away, and they will be sending it to our committee manager. I will send it out to uh, the committee members, and we'll also get it up on Nellis um, as soon as possible. So. Um, that's what we're working off of is that amended copy. So that's important to know. Uh, I did run over and took a look at the chat. Uh, I saw that Vice Chair Miller has a question. Do I have any other questions? I'm looking at the. Kras Ms. Assemblywoman Krasner. Assemblywoman Hardy. Okay, so we'll start with Vice Chair Miller. Thank you, Chair. And my question with this, um, as I discussed with, with the sponsor yesterday, I mean, we all know that this this needs to be done, that um, we need to make sure that our students have access. And I don't want it to go without saying that the students have really been the real MVPs when it comes to reporting and, um, you know, either for, for themselves or for their friends or such. But when we, so I don't want to talk about, it's not about the content. I want to talk about um, the legality and the need of this actual legislation. Um, and, and I have two questions. Um, first, I, I, I guess I'm unclear on the need for this because it's already written into legislation from last session with SB 80 with the handle with care bill that, um, is section eight uh, B one actually says that the, for safe voice, because with the handle with care legislation, safe voice was at the pinnacle of it all. And that safe voice information appears on the back of any identification card issued to pupils and staff at the school. So we already have it written in legislation that um, safe voice information would be on the ID cards. Now, I know it's not in all the school districts yet, I believe, Washoe does have that information there. Um, it, it, ironically, right before um, the, the physical doors closed on the schools, I was working with CCSD to even get stickers um, so that we could just even have stickers made to, to put out on the ID cards that had already been issued for the school year. So I guess that's my first question. We already have it in legislation, safe voice information to be on the uh, school ID cards. And then my other concern is that when the bill, and again, the content of the bill, but when we're talking about phone numbers for local suicide, national suicide, and we have spent um, a few years now, you know, invested financially in the Safe Voice program, the Safe Voice program and had campaigns at the schools the students know safe voice, safe vo and, and I'm, I'm speaking specific to K through 12. So K through 12, they know safe voice. There's posters all over the walls. There's been a campaign, there's been investment. Safe voice already automatically reports that data back to the school districts. And again, is in line with the handle with care program that we have. So I, I really have concerns with with veering away from safe voice and not keeping safe voice as the primary um, hotline that we're using with our students. Thank, thank you for that, uh, Vice Chair. So we we talked with safe voice because that was that was initially a concern of mine that we were doing duplicative efforts or um, or and I didn't in any way 
want to take away from the Safe Boys program and what they're doing because they're doing a great job and they're doing um, a, a good service to the community. And so um, that's why we we didn't uh, we didn't say we'll put this hotline instead of Safe Voice or anything like that. This is an addition to Safe Voice. What we what we wanted to do was put something very specific towards crisis suicide prevention on there, a direct line, a confidential line that that uh, that students and adults alike could call into and get the the help they need. As Safe Voice um, does communicate with the crisis center hotline that that is that would be on the back. Um, we just wanted any outlet that they could possibly take advantage of to be there at their at, at, at their hands. Um, and so we're not we're not going to remove the safe voice hotline from any IDs. Um, it's just an addition to. Follow up chair. All right. So I guess then my question is, why would we use anything in addition to safe voice? I think the crisis and from talking to both the crisis center hotline and safe voice, um, they don't operate the same. Um, uh, as you, as you stated, uh, safe voice is not necessarily a, a confidential hotline to where they, they provide the information to the school districts. And although we would, we would love to have that data. Um, we don't, we don't know that, that it's necessarily, uh, always going to be comfortable for a, a student or an adult to call into safe voice because safe voice is for just just like uh, the crisis center support hotline is for adults and 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 kids alike um and so it's it's really just to complement safe voice and to add a resource and i i you know we we believed that adding a resource any resource that you can have to help with the current crisis is is a good thing And next we had Assemblywoman Krasner. Uh, Assemblyman Levitt answered my question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think I heard you say my name there. So um, thank you, Assemblyman Levitt, for this bill. Um, you know, I think it's important for to be able to, you know, provide these um, hotlines and numbers for anyone that needs help, adults, kids, so that they know, you know, where they can reach out. So I just wanted to go, just a couple clarifying questions. Um, so as I understand, like, um, currently, is it just high schools and junior highs that have IDs? That's number one. And then you mentioned you were gonna change something. Um, you were just going to have like a certain number or, or something like that. You kind of went through that. If you could just restate what that was, you were going to, there was going to be a certain text or number or something like that. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Someone Hardy, Glenn Levitt um, for the record. So yes. So we're, we're a uh, safe voice in the current legislation with safe voice applies to only, only schools that have, have student IDs. There, there are some elementary schools that do have, uh, do have student IDs, and there are some high schools that don't. And so we're not requiring anyone to create, to create anything. Um, uh, when talking to, uh, to, to my wife about the student IDs in, in elementary school, she said that, 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 that her, uh, that our, our daughter does not bring her student ID home. She keeps it at school. So um, it doesn't, it's not like an effective tool necessarily in that scenario, but they do have student IDs, but they don't utilize them in the same way that maybe a junior high school kid or a high school uh, a child would use them. And as far as the the your second the second part of your question, so originally in the in the original bill draft, um, we kind of threw the kitchen sink at it with all this information, you know, national hotline explanation local hotline, all this stuff. And we, we soon realized that um, we're putting it on the back of student IDs, not in a book. And so we had to we had to come up with language that was very concise and a number that would fit every fit the situation. And um, and we just so we so the only thing that will be on the back of the IDs is is crisis support slash suicide prevention hotline and 1-800-273-8255 or text CARE, C-A-R-E, 
to 839863. And so that reduced it down and in, in, in that and that's the message. Okay. All right. That's exactly what I was going after. Cause like you said, I'm thinking of a little, you know, like our driver's license and you've got all these words and numbers. Um, so thank you um, for answering that. And I'm not sure if Vice Chair Miller already asked this or it was answered. So the safe voice program has where is that? Are they, is that on the cards now? Yes, uh, it, so it, 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 the legislation passed last legislative session. Um, however, as, as vice chair um, pointed out, some of the IDs didn't, weren't able to get that, that number on them. And so um, moving forward, I think all the, all the student IDs through legislation will have the safe voice number on them. And we, we also wanted to open up the uh, the NG institutions to also add safe voice to their IDs as well as an option. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair, for the questions. Okay. Are there any other questions from members? Okay, I see Assemblywoman Torres. Anyone else? Assemblywoman Torres. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I still love it for the for this piece of legislation. I appreciate the intent, um, and thank you for reaching out to me to to meet with me before um, today's meeting. Um, and I'm just wondering if I can get some clarification from maybe some of the other individuals on the call um, about like how the Safe Voice program works. If a student were to call Safe Voice right now um, and say and they were in crisis, what what steps would follow um, for that student, and what resources are available to them? It doesn't look like we have uh, anybody from Safe. Wait, I think I see Christy McGill. There we yes, go. Yes, I'm here. This is Christy McGill for the record. And if a student calls in right now and is worried about herself, himself, or somebody else, that immediately goes to we have a 27, 24 7 dispatch center that is manned both in English and Spanish day and night. That tip, uh, if it is a life safety issue, it immediately goes to local law enforcement for a well check. And if it's if it's a lower level than, than life safety, maybe um, you know someone is depressed and all that kind of stuff, it goes to the school team in need as well for the school to handle in during during hours. So um, it not only goes to law enforcement, but it also goes to a school MDT team. And also just to clarify that safe voice uh, for the tipster calling in is anonymous and confidential. Thank you for that, Ms. McGill. Uh, are there any other questions or comments from committee? Oh, you have a follow-up? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. please, Chair. Thank you. Um, so my understanding then it's non-confidential. So this would allow for the students to have access to confidential resources and just making the uh, mandating then that language be on K-12 IDs, making it permissive for higher ed. Um, and is there gonna be anything so that students know? I, I, I just struggle to know that whether or not my students are gonna know the difference um, between which line is confidential, which line is not. And is there anything on that safe voice card that clarifies that, you know, they are providing um, that they can assist with suicide? But obviously, I know that there's the flyers often in school bathrooms and things like that. But I'm just wondering, like, do the students know? Is that information indicated on the card? And would it maybe be more helpful to strengthen the language on the student ID cards regarding the services that safe voice can provide um, than for us to add additional numbers? Um, Assemblyman Lovett, did you want to take that or Ms. McGill? I don't know. Up, oh, he tripped over my bag. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank, thank you, uh, Assemblyman Torres. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know how it's written on the back. The safe voices, how they, how they put out that uh, that non confidentiality. Uh, portion uh maybe Ms. mcgill can can speak to that but uh um i think the information has to be concise and limited and so 
I think that phone numbers and, and, and statements on where they can go to get certain information, we, we found that that was the best avenue to go since an ID card is very small. Um, but, uh, but definitely we're willing to have the discussion on, on, on something that can marry the two for sure. Thank you, and I, I, and I appreciate the intent of the legislation. I just want to make sure it, it makes sense. So I would love to continue this uh, dialogue offline with yourself and perhaps Ms. Miguel to see um, what would make most sense for our students. Moving my bag so the assemblyman doesn't trip over it again. Um, okay, so are there any other questions? I'm looking. Okay. All right, I don't see any other questions. So now we will move into testimony. We'll hear support, opposition, and neutral of AB 167. Please remember to clearly state and spell your name and limit your testimony to two minutes. Oh, I did also want to tell uh, the public and members that the conceptual amendment is now on Nellis. So if you want to take a look at that, it is there now. So um, we'll start in support staff from broadcast and production services. Please add the first caller. Thank you, Chair. To testify in support on AB 167, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits of 927, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hello and thank you, Committee Chairwoman Delray Axelrod and committee members. My name is Hava Ahmad, H-A-W-A-H-A-H-M-A-D, and I'm here representing the Clark County Education Association. The Clark County Education Association represents more than 18,000 licensed professionals in the Clark County School District. We are the largest independent teachers union in the country and in the state of Nevada. We engage in bipartisan advocacy for advancing public education in Nevada. CCEA is in support of AB 167 and the conceptual amendment. And we would like to thank Assemblyman Levitt and all stakeholders for bringing this bill forward. The COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated the mental health crisis in Nevada, but the mental health crisis our students face every day is nothing more than a normal occurrence. It is about time that we as Nevadans stand together and give our students the resources they need should they require crisis support in times of suicidal ideation. By ensuring that information to the Crisis Support Center is readily accessible on the back of every student ID, students will be given one more resource that will help promote the destigmatization of mental illness and stimulate discussion on the subject matter. Though we would like to see an outreach plan connected with this bill, we understand that it is on each of us to ensure that our educators and students have the resources and knowledge needed to manage mental health. Thank you again to the committee for hearing this bill, and we look forward to continuing the mental health discussion as it pertains to education. Thank you. Thank you so much for that testimony. Uh, BPS, do we have another caller in support? Yes, we do, Chair. I will cue them now. Caller with the last three digits of 508, please press star six to unmute. Caller with the last three digits of 508, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Katie Williams, K-A-T-I-E-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. I am the trustee of Clark County School District representing District B. I'm here today to speak in support of AB 167 as it will give an additional much needed resource for our students most in need. This past year has brought forward an important dialogue about student mental health and the resources wraparound services students can receive to access that. Students need to know that no matter what they're going through in life, someone is there to listen to them. Providing the number of the crisis support center on the back of student IDs keeps this important information at the tip of their fingers, available to when they need it most. Thank you to the Nevada Department of Education for working to make sure that it also supports the complements of the work and safe ways to students who are able to get the appropriate resources and the school level when possible. Thank you to Assemblyman Levitt for sponsoring this important bill, and thank you to the committee for taking the time to inform of the Clark County School District's support of this bill. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. BPS, next caller in support. Caller with the last three digits of 520, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Madam Chair, members of the committee, Anthony Ruiz, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, R-U-I-Z, representing Nevada State College. Nevada State College is in full support of AB 167 and the conceptual amendment. Mental health is and will remain a top priority for our campus. Adding the lifeline number on the backs of our cards is something we have already begun, and we applaud the efforts of this bill and Assemblyman Levitt to expand this initiative statewide. We urge your support of AB 167. And my colleague from Western Nevada College as well um, texted me and told me that they too are in support of AB 167 along with the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller in support. Caller with the last three digits of 561. Please play a star six now to unmute. Caller with the last three digits 561. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You all have two minutes and may begin. Mariana Kiwen, M-A-R-I-A-N-A-K-I-H-U-E-N. Good afternoon, Chairwoman and members of the Assembly Education Committee. I'm the Director of Government Affairs for the College of Southern Nevada. CSN supports AB 167 and its amendment and commends Assemblyman Glenn Levitt for introducing this bill. Now more than ever, the mental health of our students is our utmost priority. You will also be hearing from Dr. Daniel Alvarado, our Director for Counseling and Disability Services, about the mental health services that CSN currently provides to our students. And for the record, CSN currently does not have the ability to print information on the back of student ID cards. However, if AB 167 passes, we do plan to acquire the new printers for each of our main three campuses, which will cost approximately $10,500. Nevertheless, CSN supports the requirements of AB 167, and we thank you for your time and attention today. Thank you for the call. Um, next caller in support. Caller with the last three digits of 157, please press star six to unmute. You will have two minutes. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record and you may begin. Hello, good afternoon committee members and Madam Chair. My name is Oscar Sita, O-S-C-A-R-S-I-D-A and I'm a human services instructor at Great Basin College. <clears throat> I'm also a licensed mental health provider in the state of Nevada. And I serve as a member of the NCHE Mental Health Task Force Committee established by Chancellor Rose to address the needs um, that have been exacerbated by COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I've been asked uh, by our committee to come before you to provide testimony in support of this bill <clears throat> and um, to talk a little bit about some of the reasons this is such an important uh, initiative. We know one in five college students um, surveyed uh, report thoughts of suicide within the last year. Suicide is the leading cause of death among college age students in the United States and usually is accompanied by a diagnosable mental illness. Uh, this initiative will serve as a protective factor in helping students um, be aware of services that are available to them and put them in touch with uh, mental health providers or other support services that can aid them through their crisis and overall um, help reduce the stigma of reaching out and accessing care. Thank you for your uh, time and attention and I appreciate everyone's um, uh, support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you for the call. BPS, do we have any other callers in support of Assembly Bill 167? Caller with the last three digits of 111. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hello, this is Joan Steinman, Dr. Joan Steinman, Executive Director of Retention and Student Support Services at Community College, Truckee Meadows Community College. Uh, Joan, J O A N, Steinman, S T E I N M A N. I'm a member of the Chancellor's and she Mental Health Task Force as well. Um, we're working with mental health and wellness issues across the system. TMCC is in support of AB 167. Putting the crisis support phone number and text number on the back of student ID cards um, is a recommended practice for campus suicide prevention efforts. 
We know that mental health concerns are on the rise in campuses uh, nationwide and in the general population. TNCC conducted a Healthy Minds survey with our students um, in the fall of 2021, and we found that 75% of the respondents reported they are currently um, in need of help for emotional and mental health problems, and 19% indicated that they had contemplated suicide in the past year. Inclusion of this information on student ID cards not only ensures our students have easy access to crisis line numbers, it also helps to normalize reaching out for help. GMCC is currently in the process of redesigning our ID cards. Thank you. Thank you so much for the call. Are there any other callers in support of AB 167? Caller with the last three digits of 428. Please press star six now to unmute. Please fully state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Dr. Jamie Davidson, J-A-M-I-E-D-A-V-I-D-S-O-N. I am the Associate Vice President for Wellness at UNLV and a licensed psychologist. I am also a member of the Chancellor's NC Mental Health Task Force, as mentioned. We fully support Assembly Bill 167 and its amendments. A student ID card can do wonderful things on campuses. It allows a holder to open doors, buy food, and do laundry. Now Nevada colleges and universities can give ID cards one more ability, the power to save lives. We cannot predict when a mental health crisis might occur. However, chances are it will not be between eight and five when the student or their friend will have easy access to help. This is why each student ID card should have crisis information on the back. So if someone needs help, they only have to look as far as their pocket. Let's remove the guesswork and start saving lives. Thank you, committee members and Assemblyman Levitt. Thank you very much. Are there any more callers in support? For anyone who has just joined, if you wish to testify in support of AB 167, Please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits of 876. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Caller 876, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you. You may need to unmute your phone. Yes, for the record, this is Daniel Alvarado, D as in David, A-N-I-E-L, Alvarado, A-L, V as in Victor, A-R-A-D-O. And good afternoon, members of the Assembly Education Committee. I am Dr. Daniel Alvarado, and I currently serve as the Director for Counseling and Disability Services at the College of Southern Nevada, and I too am a member of NC's Mental Health Task Force. With college students' mental health concerns becoming more common and more challenging, I favor Assembly Bill 167. Our Office of Counseling and Psychological Services, better known as CAPS, offers students a variety of free and confidential psychological services, including short-term therapy via phone or virtually, crisis consultation, intervention, educational outreach and workshops. COVID-19 has definitely impacted student mental health in many ways, including feelings of isolation, depression, and anxiety, which are impacted by stressors on how to meet just basic needs, including housing and food insecurities. We had roughly over 200 appointments this past fall. Our counseling center maintains regular office hours and often crisis and feelings of despair builds up during the evening and at night. Having a hotline number at hand where a confidential call can take place is very beneficial to our students. As you know, depression is an insidious illness. Having local, state, and national prevention hotline phone numbers to appear on students' ID cards is a way of having information readily available. It's actually connecting students to resources that are accessible 24-7. Thus, it could actually save lives. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak in favor of Assembly Bill 167. Thank you so much. Thank you for the call. 
APS, do we have another caller in support? Caller with the last three digits, 629, please press star six now to unmute. Caller with the last three digits, 629, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. My name is Shannon Ellis, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-E-L-L-I-S. I am the Vice President of Student Services at the University of Nevada, Reno. The university supports AB 167 in the belief that it will save lives. You've heard the suicidality statistics for college students from many of my colleagues. And let me add one particularly relevant to this legislation. Research suggests that a quarter of attempts are impulsive with five minutes or less between the decision to attempt suicide and the actual attempt. Having access to the hotline numbers on a student ID may be particularly helpful to these individuals who suffer in silence. Considering this, we agree that making hotline information as accessible as possible to our students makes particular sense for Nevada. Our counseling services currently distributes cards to students with the suicide hotline information on it. But this legislation eliminates the need to carry an additional card. So we believe publicly displaying this information on the ID may also help reduce stigma and normalize much needed conversations. Thank you for letting me state that the University of Nevada Reno supports the idea behind this bill, which would give students a clear understanding that immediate help is available 24 seven at no cost and in complete confidence. Thank you for the call. If yes, do we have any other callers in support? Caller with the last three digits of 972, please press star six to unmute. Caller with the last three digits, 972, please press star six to unmute. I will come back to them. Caller with the last three digits of 199, please press star six now to unmute. Caller with the last three digits of 199, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. This is Shadi Martin for the record, S-H-A-D-I. Last name Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N. I serve as the Dean of the School of Social Work at the University of Nevada, Reno. I also have the privilege to be a member of the Chancellor's Entry Mental Health Task Force working on mental health and wellness issues. I support AB 167. Across the country and, our own, and at our own campuses here in Nevada, we have seen an increase in severity of depression and anxiety among our college students. The COVID-19 pandemic situation has only magnified the mental health concerns among our students. Recent studies highlight the urgent need to develop interventions and preventive measures to address the mental health of our college students. This bill would require our state colleges and universities to provide information relating to mental health resources on the back of any identification card issued to students at our colleges and universities. Crisis support hotlines are private and confidential, which help ease potential discomfort for students when disclosing vulnerabilities. Studies have shown that young adults feel more comfortable sending a text message than picking up the phone in times of distress. Providing the information for these crisis hotlines makes access to the needed support easier for our students, particularly during times of crisis. Along with my support for this bill, I want to advocate for adequate funding for our crisis centers and mental health professionals. Providing access to crisis helpline is one thing, but assuring adequately trained professionals are there on the other side to provide the support is another important element that needs to be considered simultaneously. 
again, I'm in support of this bill and believe that we need to act urgently to assure that our students have access to adequate mental health support and that mental health support can be easily accessed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other calls in support? Caller with the last three digits of 972. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hi, my name is Rochelle Pellissier. Can you hear me now? We can hear yes, you, please can. go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. You couldn't hear me before, so. My name is Rochelle Pellissier. I'm the Executive Director of Crisis Support Services of Nevada. My name is spelled R-A-C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and my last name is spelled P-E-L-L-I-S-S-I-E-R. -S -S crisis Support Services of Nevada has been the crisis line for the state of Nevada for over 50 years. Um, we have exceedingly well-trained uh, individuals on our lines taking phone calls 24 seven. With this legislation, we are highly in support of this. We've been working on this for a long time to have the actual suicide prevention hotline put right on the back of student call cards. Just so you know, that phone number for anyone calling that phone number, the 800-273-8255, everyone in the state of Nevada with a Nevada area code who calls the lifeline or calls that number comes into our organization. We not only do this statewide, we are one of only nine national suicide prevention lifeline call centers. So we do this both statewide and nationally. We know if we give our students this phone number, it saves lives. It's the reason we say we stopped a suicide pack of 14, 13 year olds at Sparks Middle School in 2017. One of the students Snapchatted about the suicide pack. These students had a date, a time, a method, and a place, and it was for the next evening. They Snapchatted about it, and thank goodness one of their friends saw the Snapchat and called us, and we immediately went to work and were able to get those 14 students the services that they needed and save their lives. We also had, um, we also provide, the state provides um, safe talk at a lot of the middle schools. Last year, um, we provided a bunch of um, stickers and, and bracelets to Carson Middle School when they were doing safe, um, safe to, safe to tell, but I'm forgetting the, the, the name of that, but, um, out to them, they, they gave the, um, the class to all of their sixth, seventh, and eighth graders after they did, they gave it to the sixth graders, a sixth grade girl came up to the counselor and said, the only reason I'm, I've called Crisis Call Center three times, that's the only reason I'm alive today. And this was before they even um, gave that class. So we absolutely know these children will call and these teens will call that number. And then we go immediately into, you know, to work to help that student get the help that they need um, in the way that they need to hear it and get them the supports that they need. So we highly, highly support this bill and thank um, Assembly Member Levitt for putting it forward. Um, and thank you to um, the committee and um, the chairwoman for, for hearing me on this subject. Thank you, thank you very much for your call. DPS, are there any other calls in support? Chair, at this time, the line is open and working, but there are no more callers in support of AB 167. Okay, so we will close the testimony and support, and next we will hear opposition. Are there any callers in opposition for AB 167? To testify in opposition on AB 167, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue.
once again to testify in opposition on AB 167, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Chair, at this time, the line is open and working, but there are no callers in opposition on AB 167. Thank you very much. So we will close the testimony in opposition and we will open the testimony in neutral. Are there any callers in neutral of AB 167? To testify in neutral on AB 167, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits of 843, please press star six now to unmute. Caller with the last three digits, 843, please slowly state and spell your name for the record. We will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members, and thank you, Assemblyman Levitt. My name is Misty Allen, M-I-S-T-Y-A-L-L-E-N. I am the Suicide Prevention Coordinator for the State of Nevada and a member of the Nevada Coalition for Suicide Prevention. Previous presenters have given you incredible testimony on the need for these resources on the back of student IDs. I wanted to add one other statistic that I think is really crucial. In 2019, our youth ages 12 to 19 were 24th in the nation for a rate of suicide, and it was the leading cause of death for our, our youth and young adults ages 12 to 19. This, this bill supports the goals and objectives of the Office of Suicide Prevention National Strategy and the National Strategy promoting resources for help and increasing awareness of the Suicide Prevention Hotline and Text Line. While Safe Voice is an excellent resource for students, its intent is often for peers to help peers. This National Suicide Prevention Lifeline with the Crisis Port Services of Nevada gives them an opportunity to get incredible crisis intervention and suicide de-escalation in an anonymous and confidential manner. It also allows them to reach out for help of their family and other loved ones that um, it would look different than the safe voice resources. Considering increased anxiety, depression, and suicide, making resources for help and support more available would be good for our public health promotion and prevention. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much for the call. Um, VPS, do we have any other calls in neutral on AB 167? Caller with the last three digits of 714, please press star six now to unmute. You will have two minutes. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record, and you may begin. Good afternoon, Chair Bill Bray, Axelrod, Vice Chair Miller, and members of the Assembly Committee on Education. This is Felicia Gonzalez, F-E-L-I-C-I-A, G-O-N, Z-A-L-E-S for the record, testifying in neutral on behalf of the Department of Education. Safe Voice is an anonymous and confidential standalone program that can address student needs in a crisis. And it is always good practice to publish and publicize mental health and crisis response helplines in an education environment and on materials. And currently within NRS 388-14553, the Board of Trustees of a school district or the governing body of a charter school shall ensure that information concerning the Safe Voice Nevada program, including without limitation, the telephone number for the hotline established pursuant to NRS 388-1455 appears on the back of any identification card issued to pupils and staff at the school. The department recommends to keep the resources on the back of an ID card limited to what can reasonably print for maximum readability. And that sections one and three remain clear that section one provides the resources for K-12 support and section three provides the resources for higher education support. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. 
Thank you. And I, I think the, the bill sponsor is going to reach out uh, to you as well. I'll, I'll keep you in neutral for the, for the time being, but I, I'm sort of thinking that that might have been opposition testimony based on um, your statements, but uh, we'll, we'll leave it in neutral for the time being. Uh, with that, I will ask the bill sponsor if he wants to come up and say any closing words. Thank you. In closing, I whenever I present to the Committee on Education, I want to do it from the chair's desk because it's pretty pretty nice to do it here. Um, but uh, I just want to thank everyone that uh, that helped uh, work on this language, uh, my colleagues that I met with, um, helping helping come up with with the with the language uh, required to make this very successful. Um, uh, I, I'd like to thank uh, Missy Allen, Chrissy McGill, um, uh, Brad Keating from the Clark County School District, and uh, and all those uh, members of NSHE that reached out and, and I was able to talk to and, and, and really hone this in. Um, one suggestion um, that that kind of that kind of came up with uh, in regards to to uh, to printing. Um, to reduce printing costs, um, Vice Chair had mentioned to me or had mentioned in her testimony stickers, and that that could be an option um, uh, if if uh, if if a school doesn't have the ability to print um, on the back, that, that potentially we could put stickers on there to uh, to uh, minimize costs. Um, just uh, just wanted to th throw that out there for some thought, and uh, and I thank you for for your time and attention today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Assemblyman Levitt. And with that, I will close the hearing on AV 167 and take my mask off. Okay. Um, next, we have finally, we have public comment before we go to this agenda item. I'd like to remind those. Um, present that the period for public comment is an opportunity to discuss general matters that fall within the purview of this committee. Additionally, remember to clearly state and spell your name and limit your comments to about two minutes. Um, BPS, please add the first caller with public comment to the meeting. To give public comment, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Once again, to give public comment, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, the line is open and working. There are no callers to give public comment at this time. Thank you very much for that. Are there any comments from the members before uh, we adjourn? Taking a look, not seeing any hands. All right, well, I just want to remind everyone that uh, this week is Nevada Reading Week, so make sure that you uh, go read a book and uh, inspire some kids to read as well. So with that, our next meeting will be Tuesday, March 9th at 1.30, and this concludes the meeting for today. Meeting